Hey everyone, this is Ken and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on an iron golem farm. Now as you can see I've actually made this slightly different and I actually added a ton of cool features. Now I want to make this unique, I want to add a lot more detail than the typical ones that I normally see online. I mean the general design is basically a box with a long tube going straight down to the ground. Now as you can see I've actually added some functionality to it and I wanted to really create this more of a decorative piece but still have the same functionality. I wanted this to work but also look nice. I mean you want the best of both worlds you know. So this is what basically happens. The iron golem is going to fall straight down this pit and that lava is going to kill them. Because their heads are going to get stuck right inside. Now check it out once they die their items actually fall straight down into that hopper. Now I also added a full storage system because you want to be AFK. You don't want your items to get stuck in the system. You don't want to be have storage being an issue of any kind. So I try to create as much chest as possible for the space that's being utilized. Now you can see in front of us that it works perfectly fine. I mean that's exactly what, I, what we want. I mean that's amazing. I mean it serves its purpose. It does it quite well and trust me guys the results are amazing. Now check it out, he just died and the items are going to flow right into that chest in front of us. You see? Look at that, we just got two more iron bars, which is great. And that's just a little bit of time I've been working on it. That's perfect. Now as we can say, I mean we have tons of storage. And the reason I have all the storage because when you have an AFK system, you tend to lose track of time. I mean you don't want this to start overflowing and items despawning. You know what I mean? Now right here is the bulk of the rest zone. It is a simple item elevator that just simply transfers the items upwards to the rest of the storage system. See? It's pretty simple. And the cool thing is you can really make more than one of these. But I'll explain to that later because it does get slightly complicated. So this is the basic material we're going to use. You will be needing a block of your choice. Some stairs, more for decorative reasons. Half slabs. Need at least one bucket of water, I mean of lava, and eight buckets of water, okay? You also need some signs. And I love to use glowstones, but if you don't have that, torches are just as fine. You will need some hoppers, chest, trap chest, a little bit of redstone dust, redstone torch. Repeaters, one comparator, and three droppers. Fantastic. Now at this point, make sure you have the spacing, okay? You're going to need this much space to really start the build. So make sure you pause at this point and have this layout ready. Now once you've done that, I want you to go straight down to the center of it. Go about one block in and place two blocks in the center, okay? Now you're going to place one on each side and you're going to extend the corners about two more blocks high. And I like to do, I like to add glass right in the middle. I want to see when they die and it kind of gives a really good visual effect. Now you're going to of course place some blocks on top and just cover that up. And starting from this point, you're going to add nine more blocks straight across. So it should be a total of ten blocks in a straight line, starting from the front. So of course place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and of course the front is considered ten. Now make sure you fill in the gaps as well. Now what I like to do is add about three blocks on each side, and of course extend that up two more times. Now you could also place blocks there as well, but for the wraparound. I like to add glass. I like to see when they fall. I like to give me that visual effect. Plus, for the storage system, it also adds a little more lighting because it has that centerpiece that's completely open. And guys, it makes a world of difference, trust me. Now, at this point, you're going to make a 4x4 spacing because that's going to be the drop zone. And let's cover this up right here. Forgot those three blocks right there. One, two, three. And perfect. Now guys, get your hoppers ready. 
and get your signs ready because you'll place your signs right there in the bottom and the top and leave that little gap right there and you're going to repeat that on both sides okay perfect now right over here in the front you're going to delete those two blocks and that one as well now you're going to place a hopper all the way to the back part and pretty much place three hoppers going towards it <clears throat> now it's going to be temporary okay guys because we're going to fix that up on the other end but you want to set that up for now now right here in the back add two buckets of water and it's going to flow evenly all the way to the end and on the top here you can either place one or two buckets of lava that's where you want their heads to be at fantastic so you should have this kind of format now you're going to add seven more blocks to this edge right here okay has to be seven blocks and you're going to do that again and have two lines and you're pretty much going to repeat that on each side you see you want to create this exact format because it's going to be at least a total of 16 blocks from one end to the other perfect guys now at this point you're just going to fill in the gaps and you're going to make a perfect platform you see now once you've done that you should have this kind of format you see now what I like to do to add a little more detail is add some upside down stairs from this point and kind of stretch it all the way around okay awesome now, I did time lapse that a little bit but you kind of get the point now from this part you're going to do the same exact thing but you're going to be one block inwards okay you see all the way to you connect to the other side fantastic now we're going to start creating the item elevator now we're going to have to break this because we're going to have to set this up a different way so delete those two blocks delete that as well and what you're going to do is place one block there temporarily to stop the water flow and from here count one two and add a block right there and that's going to be temporary as well and you're going to place hoppers going towards that block okay and one more at an angle then you're gonna delete that and make sure it's delete the head block as well and cover it up see and two more blocks perfect now at this point add three droppers going upwards fantastic and of course cover that up awesome all right so it's really coming together see how it's all leading straight to those droppers now add one comparator add three blocks in front of it and make sure to add one on the side but not there make sure it's on the other side and delete that then add a torch behind that block in front of that block and on the side of that block then add one repeater going forward on two ticks with a block in front of it fantastic then you're going to add a repeater going towards the dropper right there and two pieces of redstone dust well three run there there and there as well you see fantastic all right now at this point we're going to create a nice little framework here just to cover that up and all the way up to the wall and you can add one there because you want to create a nice little door frame but bear in mind do not add a door there at any point and I'll explain later why now from this point you're gonna add another set of stairs and of course repeat the same exact process okay perfect and right underneath you can even add some blocks just to make that look a little more even perfect so you really just wrap that around now from that point just dig some blocks all the way around to the front now guys at this point this is completely optional what I'm about to do the reason I do that is because I like to place glowstone from that point and wrap it all the way around so that once I place the chest on top of it it lights up and it really gives a really nice effect see let me show you what we're gonna do is we're gonna place some chests right on top of that one section right there kind of wrap this storage system all around and behind the chest you're going to add one hopper behind each one now guys it does get very repetitive at this point and the storage system is completely optional 
Now, once you've done that, I want you to add some blocks on the corner. And you're going to add some large chest right on top. All right, let me time lapse that a little bit. Perfect. Now, feel free to pause at this point. I know this does take some time and is a bit tedious. So, trust me, I understand. Now, right here on the back part of the chest, add one hopper going downwards on each one. Then you're going to add one going downwards, and then you're going to add hoppers leading, you see, leading towards that one on top now, okay? Adding a second row here. Now, this is going to be like the main pipeline to each chest. Fantastic. Now, like I said, guys, this storage system is completely optional. If you guys have a better way to connect this or you have your own style on how you want to do this, you can. I'm just showing you another way to really utilize the space underneath the entire system. Now, what you want to do, you want to have this pipeline pretty much leading all the way to the droppers. But when you get to the droppers, I'm going to show you the certain format to set it up because you don't want to put it on top of that rest on torch. You see? So bring it there and make sure it curves at an angle and nor near that torch or that block. And what I like to do is I like to fill in the gaps underneath. One, because you don't want nothing, of course, spawning in there like a creeper. And you just want to close that off just for safety purpose. Fantastic. All right. Let me just cover this up. Hoppers are kind of in the way. All right, so it's really coming together, guys. Now you're going to delete this side. Delete those blocks because you want to create a nice entrance. Perfect. Let's add a little more trimming to this. And what I love to do, guys, is also add some redstone, well, glowstones <laughs> right on top of the chest. One, it gives more lighting, and I just love the effects that it gives with the chest, especially when you add some stairs like I'm about to do right now. Now, just make sure you add some stairs in front of it just to cover that up. And if you guys try it out, I mean, like I said, guys, it's completely optional. You don't have to do that. I just love to do that for the simple fact I like how um, it lights up the area and how the chest look right underneath it. Perfect. Now, from this point, we're going to play some upside down stairs and just kind of connect this whole top part right there, okay? And, of course, guys, you're going to wrap this all around the entire system. You see? Perfect. And right up there, you're going to do the same exact format, and you're going to notice right away that it connects with the first set of stairs that we placed. You see? So it really gives this nice shape and pattern to it. Now, guys, place a block there, and what we're really going to do is just actually wrap this thing all the way around, and you're going to repeat that two more times. So I want you to have a three-block high wall all around. You see? Perfect. Now, feel free to pause. I know this does take some time. Then you're going to add six blocks right across on the corner, and starting from there, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? Then we're gonna create a nice little triangle, you see? Perfect. Now you wanna create that same exact pattern to each one. So let's try it one more time. We're gonna add six blocks right across. Then starting from there, that's one. Then of course, two, three, four, five, six, and create the same exact triangle pattern. Awesome. So once you've done that, it should have this kind of format. Now, the cool thing is all you have to do is add one bucket of water to each corner. See? And it's going to flow perfectly right to the edge. Let's try that one more time. You can notice how nicely it just connects. And like I say, guys, just do that to each corner just like so. Fantastic. 
Now, at this point, I like to add some torches on the side just to get more lighting because you don't want any mobs spawning inside. So once you have that all torched up to your likings, add two more, well, three more blocks to each corner. Just like so, you see? Then you want to get your doors and you want to place it right there at the edge, right across, okay? So you're going to have that gap and you're going to extend that all the way down, okay? Now the cool thing is that's as much doors as you need for this entire design. You don't have to add any more than what you see in front of you. Then right on top, add a solid block and you're going to stretch that all around as well. Perfect. Now once you've done that, create the same exact platform right on top of it. You see? And of course, make sure you have that hole right in the middle. Now we're going to repeat the same exact thing again. Now add about three blocks high. And of course, we're going to cover this up and make a three block wall all around. You see? Same exact blocks. Now bear in mind on top guys, make sure you add some half slabs. Okay, just so no mobs will spawn on it. Now, of course, we're going to do the 6x6 six six triangle. And you're going to repeat that to each corner. Fantastic. All right, guys, we're doing good. Then add your buckets of water. And there you have it. Now let's add our finishing touches. Now the finishing touches will be to add some torches. Now like I said guys, the system is complete. And just for one more note, make sure the half slabs are on top, okay? Now starting from here, right above the stairs, in the center, you're going to add three pieces of glowstone, which is optional. Then you're going to add blocks right around it making a three by four spacing and some stairs from that point and you're going to stretch it all around so delete that let's wrap this all around it and there as well now on the edges i like to add some at least three blocks going upwards one two three Then we're going to add some blocks right across. And all the way through, you pretty much get to the door frame, okay? And right inside, you're going to repeat the same pattern. Add some glass just to cover that up. Now, you don't have to use glass. I like glass because it's transparent and I love to see the villagers. Perfect. So you're going to have the same exact format. Now, bear in mind, we're going to repeat this all around. Now, if you don't want to use a glowstone, you can also use torches to, just like so. The reason you want that there, because you don't want any of the mobs spawning inside, killing the villagers. Because trust me, that could be a pain. Now, like I said, you could definitely use glowstone as well, which is my personal preference. But like I said, guys, it's really optional. Now, to add a little more detail, right over here underneath that block, add some half slabs. You see? Because you want it to create this really nice triangle pattern, you see? It kind of gives more detail to your design. It's like a nice little final touch to it. Now this one, guys, make sure you add at least two villagers in each section. Now keep in mind, we're going to repeat the same exact little cage area on each side. Now once you add your two villagers inside, just cover it up and add some half slabs right on top. Now the cool thing is to really activate the system, for it to really start working, you just need a minimum of 10 villagers. But trust me, the second you get about two of them inside, they're going to start breeding, and that will not be an option. I mean, that won't be even be an issue, I mean. You see? Perfect. Now also, there's two things to keep in mind. When it comes to console with a PlayStation and Xbox, you have a max limit of 50 villagers per map. So bear that in mind when you want to build multiples. 
And also keep in mind you need at least an 80 block distance on each side. And you got to make sure there's no doors planted within that 80 blocks. Otherwise the system won't work. Okay. So I will be putting information in the description to better explain this and to help you guys out as far as setting up a secondary system. But trust me guys, when it comes to these kind of farms, they're very delicate and they could be complicated if you do it the wrong way. Anyway guys, I really want to thank everybody for watching. Remember to please leave a comment and subscribe.